Holy crap! On a stick! Look how many yellow plus squares are there! It's going to take me like two or three days of just clicking buttons. Now sometimes it's just one or two skills, fine, but I have to go through 1,236 crew members manually for each and every vehicle in my garage. That's going to take a while. That's going to take super long time to do so. I don't trust auto select from Wargaming. They're going to pick like control impact for light tanks or repairs for artillery. No, no. Or like safe stowage for artillery. No, <laughs> not even close. But instead of doing each and every vehicle, let's just do all the classes, all the vehicle types. The light tanks, the medium tanks, the heavies, the tank destroyers, and artillery. So I have selected the six crew skills or close vehicles in my garage. So these are the creme de la creme of the crews. Not for artillery, only like four or five crew skills. So not that big of a scumbag yet but then again these are just normal crews not zero skills female crews or special crews so technically they could be six skills technically but whatever so let's go through each and each and every vehicle class just for the sakes but light tanks we have the EBR and the T100 light tanks so it's a little bit more spread out for the EBR but let's just do the EBR first commander very simple borders in arms always first this is a given this is a prime s tier of a perk but yeah you always choose this one first or mentor now mentor is very good for random public matches random battles but this is not good for like onslaught or ranked if you will or even clan wars so this is not a competitive skill this is more about grinding so this is very good for the grind not that good for competitiveness so let's just cater this video to random battles not for clan wars or onslaught so i will pick this one first this will speed up your crew xp which then again speeds up everything right so i would select this one first for commander Bartis in arms camo and recon or view range both are good but i would prefer camo first since there are corridor maps so recon is not as good when you're close range but then again yeah camo i would say camo is better than recon you can help out recon with radio operators situational awareness skill so i would say recon first and then camo or camo first and then recon but situational skill like emergency not that great i wouldn't really need it especially for light tanks if you do get hit you don't have that much health to get constantly hit so very situational like c tier already cover all the tier list for all the vehicle skills but sound detection also very situational sometimes there's no artillery for you to shoot at no and coordination is also very gimmicky because you have to spot the vehicle yourself then you're shooting but if you're shooting you're giving up your camo and your position so just the positioning of a crew skill i guess this is mostly uh, mostly good for medium tanks or sometimes heavy but mostly medium tanks i believe but i will pick steel repairs to help out with the tracks the little tires repairing also good for tracked light tanks too don't you doubt this thing this also helps out when you have a long cooldown on the repair kit but practicality next definitely helps out with the repair kits or the detracking so eh, pretty simple for light tanks this is very situational situational sometimes good but mostly for medium tanks mostly mostly so i'll pick these for the commander and for bonus perk the commander is also the loader in this sense but adrenaline adrenaline rush is situational for light tanks you don't have that much health to go into the range of having better dpm also you're not focused on firepower so i wouldn't say this is that good intuition is good close combat is not that great you're not getting too close with the light tank no safe stowage is good perfect charge is good ammo tuning from what i found is very 
very niche. Now, it seems good on paper, but when you're fully training a ammo tuning skill, it only boosts the penetration by like 2 millimeters to like 4 on average. So not that great. Damage alpha is only boosted by like 4, 5, maybe 6. So it's not like 20 more alpha or 30 more alpha. Not, not the case. So this is very niche. It looks good on paper, but 2% is not that much. If it was like 5% or even 10, this would be S tier, but it's only 2. So for light tanks, I will still say safe stowage. Instantly one shots you, feels bad. Intuition and faster shell velocity. So that seems good, but ammo tuning is up to you. You can switch out perfect charge with ammo tuning, but I like to snapshot and faster shell velocity means you are hitting the target faster, right? So yeah, perfect charge seems better than two more millimeters of penetration on average. Yeah. But gunner skills. So gunner always brothers in arms, but if you're starting out, I would say snapshot is good when you're traversing the turret. So moving about. Camo is also good for light tanks, but brothers in arm first. Uh camo. Uh if you want to be consistent or somewhat of an organization pet peeve, you might want to put it into the same order as the commander. So if we're doing that, then mm, we should do something else than Brothers in Arms for the second slot or Camo for the second slot. Eh, whatever. I would say Camo still second for light tanks. What's the next one? Repairs? Probably repairs for gunners. I mean, unless you're wanting to do damage, but you don't need a faster turret traverse. It's already 70 for the EBR and like 50 for the light tanks. You don't need faster turret traverse. Uh, stationary vehicle. This is for sniping. So situational skill on gunner slots. What I feel is concentration. Quick aiming seems kind of situational, right? Unless you really need it, like heavy tanks, but designate target is also very situational, situational, but this is one of my guilty pleasures of a perk, first off. So this was a commander skill, now it's a gunner skill, I think. But yeah, this one, I have a soft spot for. So for the third skill on a light tank, I would say snapshot. Maybe Deadeye next. Do a little bit more module damage, repairs, and finally, armor seems good on RNG and dispersion, but dispersion is not that much. It's only 1.5%. It's not that much. Not really. But it's helping out with the RNG. Now, I actually like the RNG, surprisingly. I like the higher end of RNG. If you're buffing the lower end of RNG, that's fine, right? But they're also nerfing the higher end of the RNG too, so... It's a double-edged sword, if you will, but this one's up to you. You can choose armor for the RNG, less of an RNG, or choose designated target. You're not picking quick aiming or concentration. These two are mostly for heavy tanks or tank destroyers, can be in a bush. So I would say designate target for me, but you can also pick armor, if you will. All right, driver for light tanks, the arms, camo. Off-road driving is already good. Smooth ride is also good. Clutch braking is good enough. But reliable placement is very situational. Control impact is not even needed to be talked about for light tanks. No, you don't need this for light tanks. <laughs> I mean, it helps out with your suspension, right? So less damage to your suspension by ramming, but you're not getting rammed unless you're sitting still in a light tank. Bad idea. So... Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> and Engineer is very situational too. It looks good on paper too, but it's only 1 km power top speed. Now, original Super Test also buffs the engine power, so this one is... Meh, not really. Penalty to a damage engine, not that much. Use the repair kit from the commander, so practicality with the cooldown of consumables. So, this one's also very situational, so pick... 
Uh, this one, off-road driving, smooth ride, repairs, and then clutch braking, practically. These are A tier, uh, A tier at least. So these are very good. Old skills are also very good. So I will pick all of these. These three don't even need to talk about for light tanks. Don't even need to. I mean, eh, you could have better top speed for like the TOG, but that's a whole different can of worms. And radio operator skills. But as the arms, now this perk is very good. The communication expert. So basically, if you have assisted damage more than your HP, and light tanks don't have that much HP, so this one gives you a half of a vent of a boost. This is also very good. Now, but you want to have camo first. Camo applies to moving as well. So camo is very good for light tanks. Better view range. Communication expert. Repairs. Now, these ones are your preference. So firefighting, your preference. But if you have fire extinguisher instead of food, so not really a competitive perk. Uh, it is competitive perk. So using food is competitive. Using normal fire extinguisher is not competitive. So train this if you have food. If not, then you don't need this. So this is dependent on your playstyle or the meta or the mode you're playing, but I have fire extinguisher. I don't need it. <laughs> uh side by side for light tanks. No, you're you're at the front lines or you're scouting in a bush somewhere near the vehicles, enemy vehicles. You're not having a side by side bonus unless you're playing a heavy tank or assault medium tank, assault tank to shore. Not for light tanks. These two is up to your preference. Reduce the time by spotted by one second or faster sixth sense pinging. I would say jamming. I would say jamming. So less time you're spotted, so better. I would say jamming for radio operator skills. But yeah, that's the light tanks. So light tanks are very spotting oriented, and the, all the skills are very situational. So out of the six core skills or six role skills if you will three of them are very situational other three are necessary like situational awareness communication expert and one of the which but the core skills are important not as important for artillery because you don't need repairs on artillery and sometimes you don't even need camo on artillery artillery camo is surprisingly bad surprisingly so camo could be forgotten in some other perk for artillery but Moving on to medium tanks, this will take a while. It already took like 12 minutes for light tanks discussion. Holy crap. Alright, for medium tanks, let's choose my anime crew. But, let's see. Commander, it's practically the same. Mentor, give you a little bit more XP. Random public matches, random battles. Brothers in arms, recon. I would say recon first over repairs and camo, but probably repair second and then camo. I mean, camo is still good. Not getting spotted is still good, right? So camo and then practical. It's still the same order or still the same picks, but the ordering is slightly different. Slightly different, but not that much. So coordination, uh, this is up to you. You can replace practicality with coordination or something, but yeah. These four is still preferable on medium tanks. These are your preferences of flavor, but I will say mentor and practicality. All right, for the gunner, it's still practically the same, but in your arms. Now for medium tanks, I will say snapshot first. You're turning the tur uh, turret around and shooting. Second will be did I? More module damage? Detract faster? That might be good. Repairs. Camo. Ooh. I mean, aim time on most medium tanks are good. Under 2.5 seconds. So it's not like a big caliber gun for most medium tanks. You don't need this. Not really. And you're not sitting still. Hopefully you're not. You can't be in a bush in a medium unless you're playing like a leopard one. But if you're shooting, you're probably reversing. Just so if you're being spotted, right? So 
and this is more of a grill 15 perk than an actual medium tank perk. Um, this one's also up to you. I would say designate target, but this one you can also pick armor. So these two are tied. I have a soft spot, like I said, for a designated target, but yep. <clears throat> Driver. Where's the arm first? Off road driving, second. Smooth ride, third. Clutch braking. Repairs, camo. Yeah, that seems good. You don't need engineer. Engineer is still red herring of a perk. It only c control impact is situational, right? If you're close enough to ram somebody, you're obviously close enough to shoot somebody. It's always more beneficial to shoot somebody, right? Because if you're ramming somebody, their friends are shooting at you. You're getting close to their team. So this is very kamikaze of a skill. No, HE shell absorption. Only happens with artillery, so maybe for heavy or assault tank destroyers, maybe, but the And radio operator, brought the arms, situational awareness. Communication expert is also good, but this is also helpful if you're detracting assist damage, not just spotting. So I'll play this next. Oh, this one's hard. You can't have side by side. This is good for... Wolf packing in medium tanks. So 50 meters is still close. I would prefer it if it was like 100 meters. But then again, that would be way too broken. Yeah, that would be way too broken if it was 100 meters. Maybe 75. Maybe. But repairs, camo are always good as well. So repairs and camo. Final one. So instead of jamming, which applies to light tanks, I will say side by side if I can actually pick it oh no so I already is only five crew skills oh yeah then again most German medium tanks don't have a radio operator <laughs> oops all right fine but pick side by side next I believe if you have fire extinguisher you don't need firefighting but that's up to you and finally we carry is burning your arms safe stowage uh this one Ammo tuning only helps penetration by 3 millimeters and alpha by 5. It seems not that crazy, right? It needs to be like 5%, I believe. Yeah, 5% would be about 7 more millimeters of pen or so, which is not bad. And a little bit more alpha, like 10 more alpha. Yeah, this seems kind of low for ammo tuning, but then again, it's a very dangerous perk to buff. Very dangerous perk to buff. I would say afterwards you pick safe stowage, repairs, uh, concealment, intuition. Uh, E50 could have close combat if you want. It's assault medium tank, but this is situational effect. Like I said, situational effects are not as good like ubiquitous effect, like perfect charge, faster shell velocity. So you can also pick adrenaline rush, but then again, Situational, like I said, so perfect charge never could be more better with snapshotting, right? And less leading of the target with perfect charge, but yeah, this one, yeah, very situational. Ugh. So medium tanks is more, more or less about the same, but ordering is slightly different. Slightly. Same applies to heavy tanks. This will take so long. <laughs> All right, heavy tanks a little bit faster. Six, six minutes from the last one. All right, fine. Commander, Mentor, Brothers in Arms, Repairs first, then Recon, Practicality, and then Camo. <laughs> Sound Detection, whatever, I don't care, I'll get hit by artillery, I'll hide behind cover, that's yeah, fine. Emergency, what, it maybe could be useful, uh, you're not spotting, Coordination is useless for heavies, you're getting spotted first, so no, uh, that, that might be better. <laughs> for Gunners, Brothers in Arms, uh, crap. Repairs, probably second. Snapshot. Dead eye. Oh crap. You're not needing designated target unless you're sniping with a heavy tank. You're not sniping with a heavy tank most of the time. You're having a quick aiming with the turret traverse. So faster turret traverse, faster aim speed, quick aiming for heavy tanks, and maybe camo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you seem 
disappointed in Campbell for the final skill, but Campbell is still good, right? Still helps out with some of the Campbell. Wow. Yeah, it's still good. I would still say it's good. They jumped from like 7% to, yeah, 7% to like 12% <laughs> if everybody's trained. That still feels good to me, right? That still feels good. You're not, you're not staying still in a heavy tank, right? Yeah, RNG is up to you, but it doesn't help out with the dispersion as much as you want. It's only 1.5%. And this one's, uh, you're close range. You're fighting at face distance. You're not having a vehicle leaving your sights anytime soon unless it's a scouting light tank or something but you're not getting you're not spotting the light tank light tank spotting you situational <laughs> so deal more module damage is always always more beneficial to me brothers in arms offer of driving actually repair offer of driving clutch braking smooth ride camo <laughs> You can have control impact for heavy tanks or HE shell absorption. This is up to you, but situational perk, you're not ramming all the time, you're heavy, even though you could face hug, but you're not fast enough. Unless you're like a IS-7 or E-50 or something of a breakthrough heavy tank, not a salt heavy tank, but uh, this one's up to you. You could have re reliable HE protection than camo, but uh, old habits dies hard. You can have engineering, right? Engineering is only one kilometers per hour top speed. Not that much, especially on an IS-7. Not that much. IS-7 has 59.6 kilometers per hour top speed. This is this is a drop in the bucket for our IS-7. Camo, give me more camo. <laughs> All right. Loader and loader radio operator. So let's just pick loader and radio operator. So loader, brothers in arms, Safe stowage is more important than repair initially. So you could pick safe stowage instead of uh, brothers in arms first for the loader. This is so key for Russian and Chinese vehicles. Their vehicle hulls are very compact. The crew fighting compartments are very compact. So they're all jammed into one spot. Getting hit means ammo rack is likely getting damaged. Also applies to the Carnarvon and the Conquerors and stuff. But yeah, safe stowage is kind of important for heavy tanks. I will say safe stowage, possibly even for first slot if you want, but second one, repairs. Uh, close combat seems nice, but hmm, you have three more skills to pick. Intuition also helps, but uh, this one, loader is hard for heavy tanks because close combat comes into play, but 50 meters is still very close. If this was like 100 meter, this is a S tier pick, but 50 meters is automatic detection circle range, which is still kind of close. So unless you can get very close without getting fired upon, then you will choose this, but... Uh. You, do you need shell velocity? That's another question. If not, then fudge shell velocity, right? Unless you're sniping with a heavy tank, where you shouldn't. Ah, fudge shell velocity. Go with close combat and then camo. Adrenaline rush is very niche. Very niche. And ammo tuning, like I said, only buffs penetration by 3 and alpha by 6, DPM by like 30. So not that much. It seems good, but... You wouldn't really notice it. I wouldn't think you would notice it that much. This is the red herring. <laughs> and radio operator skills. Situational awareness, better view range, communication expert. And side by side for wolf packing. You don't need to be jamming. You don't need to be faster pinging of the sixth sense. So pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's all about the same. Like one or two perks might be different, but mostly about the same. So tank destroyers. Oh, we have assault and sniper. So I have to choose either one, but assault wise. Mentor. Brothers in the arms. Uh, assault is recon or repairs and then recon and then camo and then practicality. You could have, uh, okay, no need to mention these again. 
Radio operator perks, more view range, assist. Now this one could be a toss up. You could have side by side first, then communication expert, but side by side is only working if you have a teammate near you. Communication expert works if you just need track or spot for the damage, right? So I will pick this one second still, but this one third for a bonus perk. Yeah, definitely this one third for bonus perk. Alright, Assault Tank Destroyers, Gunner Skills, Brothers in the Arms. More module damage. Big, chunky alpha guns have big module damage. Boost that even more by Deadeye. Alright. Uh, repairs or Snapshot. This one's up to you, but... There, there's a gun traverse speed for this thing. It's not technically turret traverse speed, but... Uh, repairs. Snapshot. Quick aiming? Actually, camo may be better than quick aiming. This one's up to you. Uh, I would say quick aiming, then camo for assault. Assault, mind you. This is not a sniper. We'll do the sniper next. So, heavy dependent of a play style for these vehicles, depending on your roles. It's a lot, a lot more different than heavy tanks. Brothers in arms, off road driving, clutch braking. You're not shooting while driving most of the time, so I would say repair next. But theoretically, you could go ramming. Nah, situational. <laughs> and let's just do smooth ride and then camo. Loader, two loaders. All right, but but yarn safe stowage. Um, yeah, repairs might be better than yeah, repairs might be better than intuition. Maybe. Yeah. Do you want to switch the shells quickly? Some big caliber guns kind of need the faster reload, right? Like 170mm, 152s. Ah, intuition. Camo? Or shell velocity? Close combat is up to you. This is more aggressive, but then again, Fixed mounted turret tank destroyers are not as viable in close range fighting unless it's a single one to one combat. So, this is very situational for me in like the 268 version number four. So, if you're playing the Minotaur with a pseudo turret, this could work. But if you're having a disadvantage of lack of a turret, then I would say perfect charge, maybe ammo tuning. 8 alpha seems a little bit better now. You're getting higher end of the alpha, so ammo tuning might be better for larger alpha. Hmm, crap. This one's close. This one's close. It's close between these three. This one is ubiquitous. This one is kind of good for larger alpha guns, right? But this one's situational. Ah, oh, crap. This is a hard choice. Shell velocity on the 26A is not that great. And 10% is kind of a big deal. Like if you have a 1,000 meters per second, 10% is 100 meters per second. That could be a big difference of you leading the shot. So, ah, fudge it. This might be good for sniper. This is good for close range, I guess. And then camo. <laughs> so luckily you can switch it within 30 days to play around with it, but mm, okay. And finally for the sniper, so different picks, especially for the S tank commander. Let's see, mentor, blah, blah. Camo first, you're sniping, recon. Uh, you're not repairing that, that much. You're sniping behind, so practicality and then repairs, situational, you don't need it. There is a small fun fact with high-end headphones and audio setup you can actually hear a slight distortion in your feedback or your sound of the random environment when artillery shells are coming at you within your visit, uh, visit, blah, vicinity so it's kind of like sound detection but you have to be very keen ear towards this thing so if you have been playing this game a long time there's a slight distortion in sound when our Enemy artillery shells are fired upon you. So if you listen carefully, you'll hear it, but you don't need 
sound detection. But then again, if you're not getting spotted, you don't need artillery. Uh, you don't need sound detection. So, situational. You're not supposed to be getting hit with the emergency. And you're not spotting stuff. So, unless you have binoculars. But that's very situational. That may be the better choice for snipers. The same applies to medium tanks or sniping light tanks. But you're not supposed to. Alright, drivers for the S tank. But the arms. Camo first. Getting to position faster. You're not shooting while moving. <laughs> so, clutch braking. Repairs. Engineer, surprisingly. You're not shooting while moving. With the S tank. You could be shooting with like... The Minotauros or other stuff. But for the S tank, very situational. Definitely engineer. <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> and for the gunner. Or... Secondary bonus perk. Uh, module damage. You don't need snapshot. Uh, you are stationary. So even better accuracy. I mean, four, three. Eh? It's not changing that much. It's still two, uh, 0 0.28. Huh. Oh, eh? 29 to 28. Fine, better accuracy. You're sitting still. And aim speed is already quick, unless you're non-siege mode. So, yeah, turret reverse speed doesn't apply. It's going up and down with the gun, with the hydrogen max suspension. It's all, it's all about your hull traverse speed, technically. So, these two doesn't really work. Designate target might be a little bit better. Potential damage, up to you, right? That's up to you. Sniper, weird S-tank. S-tank is a very weird of a sniper. But in the arm first. Uh, camo. S tank is all about the camo. Um, communication expert might be better starting right off than situational awareness. If you're getting assisting detracking assist, you'll get this off more than you're spotting something, but spotting is still good, right? Spotting is still good. And you're not side by side. <laughs> Jamming might be better than faster pinging of your sixth sense. So maybe sixth sense might be helpful for you to go in and out of siege mode. But I would say jamming. Hmm. Repairs finally. <laughs> and for the loader perks, you're not supposed to be safe stowage on a sniper of a vehicle. It's good, but you're not supposed to be getting hit. You're not supposed to be close combating too for snipers. So intuition, perfect charge, ammo tuning. Um, switching these two around, ammo tuning first, and then perfect charge. That's up to you, but okay. Yeah, you're, you're not close combat. You're not safe stowaging. You're not adrenaline rush. Safe stowage not really applies to snipers. It's still good, but... Yeah, you're getting hit, nonetheless. I mean... I mean, it's hard to take off a, a perk or replace safe stowage. Because I kind of feel I need it, right? It's very salty to get one shot it with one Amorak damage. But... Which one would I give up for safe stowage on a sniper? Ah, <sighs> uh, Maybe... Ammo tuning doesn't seem that crazy. It's only 4 millimeter and 5 alpha damage. Yeah, okay, safe stowage. <laughs> Perfect charge. A little, a little bit better for a smaller caliber of a sniper gun, right? A little bit better. Alright, god, this is taking a while. <laughs> Alright, finally, folks. Finally, doing tank to shore twice, but finally, artillery. <laughs> artillery is an easy pick. Artillery is so easy. First one, a mentor, brothers in arms. You're not reconning. You're sound detecting from counter fire of artillery shell. Surprisingly, you're picking this first, or possibly third. But yeah, you're picking this. Now, what's funny is camo on artillery is a very big red herring. It's not that good. All artillery camos are utter crap if you've been playing for a long time, but. Tier 10 artillery camo, the best, is actually 
The Bacha Arturi has 6.27% of camo. That is crap. Now granted, it's still like a heavy tank scenario where having camo doesn't hurt, but it's not that great. Let's see, tier 9, tier 8. Best camo, 11% on the Lorraine. Yeah, 10.5% on the M40, 43. That's crap. That is real crap. So artillery have crap camo, unless you're playing like tier 5 artillery or something. Uh, tier 5 artillery, the Bulldog artillery, maybe. I don't know, but <laughs> camo sucks. So red herring of a perk for artillery, but... You're not spotting stuff. That's not even close. <laughs> These perks suck! <laughs> practicality and then camo, I guess. I mean, practicality for what? Unless you're getting hit by counter fire from artillery shells, like a bat chat, and you have to wait like 10 seconds to repair before they fire again with the auto loader of artillery shell. God, that's stupid sounding. Alright, fine, maybe, I don't know. Emergency? For artillery? Recon? No, not even close. Alright, fine, these sucks. <laughs> You can choose one more, but the final one might be Recon. Might be Recon for the last ditch effort of killing somebody <laughs> when you're camping in a bush, but that's not gonna work out well. Maybe Emergency? Nah, you're not supposed to be getting hit. Ah, these all suck. <laughs> Radio Operator, let's see. Um, communication Expert is surprisingly fun for artillery. If you get a detracking assist with this perk, you actually get a faster reload time. <laughs> And faster aim speed. Alright, fine, use this. Uh, signal interpretation. Let's you know getting spotted. But then again, you're not spotting stuff. Are you parked next to friendly artillery <laughs> within 50 meters? Oh, this might be hilarious to think about. You're not jamming. If you're getting spotted, you're not running away. You're dead. So jamming, out of the question. Signal interpretation now seems kind of bad. If you're getting spotted, you're probably dead within like 5 seconds. You're not spotting for yourself. You're not firefighting for yourself. You're side by side. <laughs> Alright, um... Man, god, this sucks. Jamming or... Jamming. If you're running away, it's faster if you have a, like the... M5355 running away. Yeah, you could run away and have less time being spotted. That might be good, but that's very situational. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you don't need to think too much about artillery. <laughs> Not really. Alright, but as the arms, module damage, very big. And snapshotting, where you're turning your gun around. So, quick aiming. And... Artillery does get... how much of a boost? Not it's ammo tuning, it's not armor. So you're decreasing high explosive range of RNG, which doesn't really work. Does this still work with artillery shells or artillery sights? I wonder. If it doesn't work, it's kind of useless, but I'll see if it works. I'll put it on, but before that, you could put camo. Oh, station. Oh, why am I picking this when you have this? Yeah, concentration. Better accuracy. That's a big deal. Yeah, better accuracy. Why am I picking snapshot over better accuracy? Yeah, I re rephrase the order. Um, quick aiming. Module damage still good, right? Module damage now applies to high explosive. Originally it doesn't. Now it applies to high explosive, especially artillery shells. So having this, not bad. Um. Accuracy. Shooting at engine deck, kind of important. Quicking aim, snapshotting, camo, like I said, red herring of a perk, but then again, only at five crew skills, so. Ah, uh, maybe designate target for the final one. <laughs> this one's up to you. Another gunner. Alright. So, 50% if you only have one gunner train out of the two, so, eh, we'll do it. Next time, driver, but as your arms, uh, you're not firing while moving in artillery. No, this is a uh, not nah. clutch braking, turn a little bit faster, 
swing the gun around faster. Off road driving, engineer, splash damage <laughs> from enemy artillery shells. So if you're playing artillery, there's definitely going to be enemy artillery. There definitely could be shooting at you, so definitely artillery HE is in the game or in the range of your damage. So this could be used. <laughs> All the weird niche perks are use artillery. <laughs> Like sound detection or something. And finally, concealment or something. You don't need smooth ride. You're not moving and shooting. Not not in artillery. Definitely not in artillery. Not you're not control impacting in artillery. Unless somebody's ramming you, but they'll be stupid to ram a GW E one hundred. They'll be dumb. <laughs> and finally for the loader. Brothers in arms, shell velocity. Especially for artillery shell. Shell velocity. Penetration is 1 millimeter. Alpha is not that much with ammo tooting, but seems better on artilleries than actually heavy tanks or medium tanks. But I would say intuition next. Maybe a little bit better. And you're not close combat. Ooh, this one's fun. This one's a fun food for thought. You could drive up to a building or mountainside or cover and splash yourself. <laughs> To give yourself more DPM by 5%, which is not bad, right? It's like half of a rammer. Is it half of a rammer? is like 10%. That's pretty good. But you're having like no health for counter battery fire. So this one's up to you. Also, you're giving away your position with the little yellow circle on enemy maps whenever you're fire upon yourself, right? You can see it if you haven't killed yourself already when you're trying to splash yourself. But this one might be a funny gimmick. You're splashing yourself for more DPM. <laughs> you don't need safe stowage. You don't need close range combat. Repairs, concealment, no. Um, I'll choose ammo tuning and then maybe splashing myself <laughs> for more DPM. And finally camo, possibly, but yeah, okay. <laughs> it's so stupid. Well, there you go, folks. 40 minutes of different roles and different perks. Sniper medium tanks. Pretty much the same as the S tank in terms of order, but some of the perks are still kind of gimmicky, right? They'll be used sometimes depending on their roles, but most of the time it's still catered towards the scenario of choosing coded optics over binoculars. Most vehicles will choose coded optics. It's very good whenever you're using it. City maps, field maps, whatever. Binoculars are only good for open field maps and camping rolls of a vehicle class. So you don't see too much of camouflage net or binoculars nowadays. Or even spall liner. I don't see that much pick of this equipment over stuff like improved hardening. Improved hardening is a lot better than spall liner, right? You have more health and bonus to repair track module health. So I don't see too much of... The old toolbox, this was the toolbox back then, but yeah, it's very situational. Sometimes it works, but it's out of the meta, so the same applies to some of the crew skills. Like I said, don't need sound detection when there's no artillery, right? That's useless in most scenarios. But unless this thing also provides like frontline artillery shell incoming or airstrike incoming, that might be good. Right? Sound detection might be good for like enemy airstrike or enemy artillery shells or even minefield. This might be good. In the actual random public match, not that really useful. Same goes with emergency. Yeah, it seems scary. People get a berserk buff when they're getting shot at, right? But if they're getting shot at, they're either doing something wrong or they're exposed. So... Yeah, I don't think emergency is very good. I mean, it's close to a one-on-one -on -one combat, but this is a team-based game, if you will. So yeah, emergency is good for like one versus one tournaments. This is good, but in a team-based scenario, not really. So there you go, folks. It took me a while to go through all the roles. Imagine me going through all the freaking <laughs> vehicles. That was just like five vehicles, right? That was just five vehicles. I talk a lot, but that was just five vehicles. 
Holy crap, it's gonna take a while. Well, there you go, folks. Good luck with you. But Onslaught is back, so you can play around with the Mentor stuff. Like for the commander, so you don't have to choose mentor for the commander when you're going to onslaught. So play around with it. You have 30 days to reset for free, but afterwards you get to reset for once for free, and then it will cost you money. But well, there you go, folks. So as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. くれたみたい秘密と壊してみたい夜の中で間違いだらけの遊びしようよ